Hello and welcome. In this video we are taking a look at support and resistances using Python. In this one I will code a simple support and resistance mechanism and also doing some fancy visualizations as you see here. In follow-up videos we are doing some backtesting of a support and resistance strategy so hit like and comment if you're interested in that. Important disclaimer, concepts shown in this video are not an investment advice, videos for educational and entertainment purposes only. Okay, so first of all, I will use the strategy presented in this article from Gianluca Malato. The article has a very nice structure and there is simply no need to reinvent the wheel, but I will strongly deviate from his presented code doing some significant improvements. I will link the article in the video description. So let's start with what are support and resistances. They are key price levels at which the price inverted its trend. So if the price rises and then inverts its trend moving down, the highest point it has reached is called resistance. If the price was plunging and then starts rising, the lowest price is called support. Once a resistance level is broken, it automatically becomes a support level and vice versa. Now the question is, how do you identify those key levels? And they are basically endless possibilities. He is using fractals. So what is a fractal? It's a simple candlestick pattern made by five candles. And essentially you are just picking the candle with the lowest low among five candles. So it has to be lower than the previous two and also the subsequent two candles. So as you see the example here, you have the candle and the low is lower than the previous two candles and it is also lower than the subsequent two candles. So whenever we have a low fractal pattern, we have a support line and we have the same but vice versa for the high, then we have a resistance line. So let's go quickly over his code. So he's doing some installations here, then is importing the libraries, pulling price data for the S&P 500, and then he is implementing the logic like this. So he's checking for a given row, I is a row. Is the low below the low of the previous row? And the low is also below the low of the subsequent row? And the low of the subsequent row is below the low of the then subsequent row and the low of the previous row is below the low of the then previous row. Right, so quite some code here and the same logic just vice versa for the high. Then he's just looping over the whole data frame and is calling those functions on every single row. Of course, we will not do it like this. We will use vectorized operations to achieve the exact same thing. Then he's doing some plotting here. And finally, he's coming up with a quite fancy chart. So candlestick chart and then some support and resistance lines. Then he's doing some filtering so that he's not getting overlaying levels. And there we are. We have a candlestick chart with support and resistance lines. So let's move on to the coding part. Okay, so first of all, we need some libraries. Y Finance, Pandas and Matplotlib. If you want to have a fancy candlestick chart, you also need MPL Finance. So you would need to install it beforehand. Pip install MPL Finance. Next, I'm going to pull price data for the S&P 500. So this is the ticker symbol for the S&P. And I'm starting in the beginning of this year, ending up with an open high, low close data frame. And now let's find the support and resistance lines using the fractal logic. So what do we need to do? Let's start with the support lines. We need to roll over the low column with a five day window and find the minimum. There's a slight issue with that. Let me show you. So if I'm rolling over the low column with a five day window and find the minimum, you will see that the first value is here. 
And that is because the rolling function is working like this. It is taking the four previous rows and the actual row and finds the minimum among those rows. But this is not what we want. We want to have this checking for the two previous rows and the two subsequent rows. So how can you achieve that? There is a very nice functionality of the rolling function to achieve exactly that. That is centering it. So the default setting for centering is false. So you're always taking the previous values for the minimum, also the maximum. If you center it, so center equals true, you will see that we are getting exactly what we wanted. So this here is the minimum considering the two previous rows and also the two subsequent rows, right? And that is already it for finding the support lines because you're just screening now for the low value being the minimum and then you have all the rows containing the lowest lows using the fractal logic. So you're just checking, is my low the minimum? Then you're getting a, a Boolean mask here. And then you're just screening the data frame for that mask. And with that, you see your support lines. So your support lines is always the low, right? So you would also just index now for the low column here. And these are your support lines. So we could store that in supports. And the exact same logic for resistance. So you would just take the high, then roll over the high column with the five day windows, center it, find the maximum, and then screen for the high. So with that, we have both our support and resistances. All right. Now let's merge them. So let's just call that levels by using pandas concat function and pass support and resistances. And with that, we have all our levels. So we could plot that using the uh, MPL finance library, pass our data frame, then define the type as candle. And now we need horizontal lines. So I'm passing H lines. I'm just taking the levels values now and transform them to a list because you have to pass a list of values to the uh, horizontal lines argument. So levels to list. And then I give it a fancy style, which is charts. So now you see the support and resistance lines. So they are not filtered yet, right? There are a lot of nearly overlaying uh, levels here. You can avoid that by filtering, for instance, as the author did, taking um, an average between high and low candles. I'm just doing uh, even more simple filtering here. So I'm just checking where the difference between the levels is um, higher than or larger than 100. So that I have a 100 difference or distance between those levels. So I'm simply taking the difference here and then filtering out for only those being above 100. So I want to have an absolute values here. So I'm getting the difference in, in absolutes and then just check are there are they above 100 and then screen levels here and just reassign it. So that would look like this way more clean, right? If you don't want to use this MPF library or it causes problem, problems for you or whatsoever, you can also do that with uh, matplotlib. I'm quickly showing that to you. So just plotting the close and then I'm using PLT H lines, so horizontal lines, pass my levels. And now you can define, using matplotlib, you can define X min and X max. And the cool thing about that is now you can amend those lines from where they are valid, right? So these lines or these support and resistance levels have a date, right? 
and you could just draw this horizontal line only from that date on, right? So I'm going to show you. So my X min value would be my levels index. And my X max value would be the last date, right? So that is simply uh, the 28th of April here, right? And I can index it by just taking the last element. So I'm just taking the last element of the index and then give it some nice color here. And with that, you will see that I'm getting the resistance lines uh, from that date on here, right? Pretty fancy as well. So in case you're wondering why these are not connected, because the line is uh, dependent from the high, right? So if you take the high into the plot, uh, you will see that the lines are connected. Or also here, this is because this is a, a, a low connected line. So if you take the low, you will see that they are all uh, connected here, right? So yeah, I hope this was interesting. So next we are going to backtest a certain strategy. So now is the question how we can actually use that and does it make sense to use those support and resistance lines? So if you're interested in that, let me know below, like the video and I'm looking forward to see you in the upcoming videos. Bye bye.